We all know what this weekend is, so the pun is completely intended. I'm going to Disneyland. The sun is shining bright and the magic is back in my life. What is going on out there, world? It's your boy Tommy on the spot for Disney 101. So great to be back here with you guys. Uh, it's been quite a little time here. If it's your first time visiting the channel, I can't even get mad at you because it's been so long. But if it is, make sure you leave a big thumbs up, subscribe. It's free to support your boy and I'll be forever gra grateful for that. Normally, I'm joined by my main man, Steve, down in Orlando, Florida. Steve will be back real soon. We'll be back with some full-length episodes of Disney 101. But the reason that I'm here today is because pretty much out of nowhere here, I'm going to Disneyland. Uh, this has been a trip that's uh, been in the works here for a while. Uh, normally, we thought we'd be going actually in the spring for what is uh, plan what we're planning to have be our long-form trip. And we still may end up doing that trip, depending how this trip goes. Uh, but we have to get to a wedding out in L.A., uh, so because of that, when we kind of looked at things, it's, it's very early in the morning and uh, we'll have the evening pretty much free. So we decided, hey, since we got to get down from New York to LA for a wedding, may as well go to the wedding and then try to see if we could get a little Disney in our life. Normally I'm not one to, uh, you know, normally if I'm going to Disney, I'm going to try to get there for rope drop. I'm going to try to be there the entire day and take in as much of it as I possibly can. So normally that's not necessarily what my plan is. With that being said though, uh, it looks like instead what we're gonna be able to do here is this Sweethearts Night. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Sweethearts Night is the Valentine's themed night specific for the folks that are gonna be uh, in town, I guess, or coming to Disneyland. And it's a, a ticketed event that is only from 5 p.m. until 12 a.m. The best part about this, I guess the worst part if you're going during the day, is that the folks that are going to Disneyland proper during the day are being asked to leave the park by seven o'clock. So you have two hours where you get to come to the park a little early, get some of the attractions in, and then basically from seven o'clock to 12 o'clock is when everything in the entire park will be taken over by Sweethearts Night. And this will be something that uh, they, they do. They've done this type of stuff in the past at Disneyland for Villains Night, and that's actually coming up again in March. Uh, but it just really fit in well with our schedule. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna be getting down to, uh, to California very early. Uh, we're gonna rent a car. Uh, we're gonna go to the wedding, which is which is that morning, and then we're gonna take that uh, car down to Anna, up to Anaheim, and go uh, about 45 minute drive. And uh, we might be able to make it exactly at five o'clock, depending on uh, what we do with checking into the hotel. And then after that, uh, we'll be able to get over to uh, to Sweetheart tonight. So we're really excited for it. And then what we did, we were leaving the next day. We're only in town literally for 24 hours. So we're gonna be leaving the next day. But what really worked out here is that we are able to go to Disney's California Adventure as well. I wanted to get down there for a number of reasons that I'll get into in a bit. But let's talk about Sweethearts Night. This event, uh, one of the things that really appeals to me, I haven't been to the parks in a long time, right? I have not been to Disney World, uh, which is a little closer to me here in New York since 2019. So pre-pandemic here. Uh, if you go back in the archives, Steve and I talked about our trip to Disney's Hollywood Studios. We did a full day in Hollywood Studios at the end of 2019. Uh, and that was the last time I was going. And I had been on a roll there for a while that I had gone, I really want to say since 2013, when I really, for the first time, went back to the parks as an adult. I think I was at the parks every year, at least once, uh, and certainly at Disney World. And definitely for me, Disney World is a little more convenient also because uh, Steve's down in Orlando, so we normally can stay with him. He also uh, used to work for the park, so he used to be able to put a little hookup ski for us, which was always really good. Uh, but ever since then, I was pretty much at the parks every year. And in 2015, for the first time, I went to Disneyland. And we also went there, I want to say, at least four or five times. So it definitely, uh, Disney has been a big part of our lives. Obviously, we have a Disney podcast. So it's really exciting to be able to get down to Disney Disneyland and to be able to experience this. I've never done a themed night at any of the parks. This one does really feel like it's very much inside. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about it here. So... Obviously for me, one of the big things, not being back in the parks and not being at Disneyland since 2018, things have really dip, uh, really changed in the parks. One of the main things, obviously Star Wars Land is now in the parks, Galaxy's Edge, that's there. Uh, there's a number of new attractions that are there, specifically on the Disney uh, California Adventure side with uh, Avengers Academy also there and uh, the Avengers Campus, if you will. So real excited to get into all of that and see all of the new stuff there. But the, the idea behind Sweethearts Night, and once it does take over, is you're basically going to have an opportunity to go and get a variety of themed snacks, a variety of themed drinks, and uh, all of these different types of food dishes that are specific to Sweethearts Night and are available throughout the park that will apparently only be there, I guess, in that one hour switchover from 7 to 8, 
they're gonna change up all the different uh, food offerings and be able to offer you a variety of different dishes there. So I'm looking forward to checking that out. There's gonna be a DJ on site, so the entire time you're in the park, you're gonna hear different uh, sweetheart type music, Valentine's Day music, get yourself in the mood for old Valentine's Day. And uh, we're really pumped for it, so it should be very exciting. It's one of these deals that uh, is also a super limited event. Uh, my brother-in-law is coming to the wedding with us and is gonna actually make the trip to Anaheim with us and is hoping that he'll be able to come to Sweetheart's Night. Now I've called and tried to get him a ticket. My wife pretty much booked this Sweetheart's Night months in advance. The second that it came available, she booked this uh, with the idea that, hey, if we can't go, we'll cancel it or something to that extent. But we, we wanted to make sure since we knew this was so limited that and since we were only in town for literally 24 hours that we did book this. Uh, so my brother-in-law hopes to come, but when I did call, they said, listen, one of the major appeals of this event is that it's really a limited capacity event. Reason for that being that we want people to be able to get onto some of these attractions and to do so without necessarily worrying about Disney uh, Genie Plus or any of these new uh, Lightning Lane type pay services. So uh, that's something I'm looking forward to. Obviously being, having, being able to get onto some of these attractions like Space Mountains, uh, and I think Splash Mountain's down, but Big Thunder Mountain, uh, those are big time attractions for me that are typically like an hour to an hour and a half wait. So being able to get onto some of those that I haven't been on in years will be a lot of fun. We also have a daughter, which we did not have the last time we went to any of the parks. So the idea that we're gonna be able to take her on a trip, it's gonna be very quick. Uh, and it's gonna be a little late night for her. She's only one, so it's a little, little, little bit like, I'm not sure how that's gonna work, but um, hopefully it will for her. I think she'll be really excited about it. She's starting to really kind of understand some of the Disney pieces of it. Absolutely hates the characters, is completely petrified of the characters. But the good news is there really aren't that many meet and greets, um, other than the ones I'm about to get into here in a bit. Uh, but meet and greets are certainly limited and there's not that piece. I don't think either, from what I've seen online for some of the Sweetheart Nights, I don't think you're like able to kind of get in that bro hug type deal with Goofy right under your right arm there for a photo. I think it's more, you get to go over, you get to say hi, and you get to kind of do like the selfie game in front of like a little barricade or some sort of uh, poles that are up or something. So there is a little distance still there due to COVID, but it's not as bad as like not having any uh, openings. So the idea that being able to take my one-year-old to Disney and give her that baby trip to Disney uh, even though it's abbreviated is something that um, I'm excited about and uh, we'll be pumped for it. So yeah, so Sweetheart's Night, not only are you getting the DJ, not only are you getting the food items, there's a royal ball. Um, I'm not sure what that is, but it seems like there's gonna be some live music and maybe each one of the different couples come out in their dresses. It's gonna be super nice. Um, that's, uh, it seems like that's gonna take place right in front of It's a Small World, so that'll be fun to see. And then they also have uh, a couple of these meet and greets. So let's get into the meet and greets here. Now, some of the meet and greets I will give you guys, uh, they've kind of gone through some of the couples that are some, let me tell you, really obscure couples. Now granted, this is great, and it certainly is great for some of your like hardcore Disney fans that probably go to the parks all the time, and so they don't necessarily get to see, they, they see they see the characters all the time. So to get some of these obscure characters I'm about to get into, I'm sure is great for them. I'm not necessarily sure we're gonna go see any of them, but uh, I definitely wanna get some of the meet and greets here. So let's get into it. Uh, on Main Street USA, you're gonna have Mickey and Minnie, of course, Donald and Daisy, Clarabelle Cow and Horace Horse Collar. I mean, talk about old school here. Mary Poppins and Bert, New Orleans Square, uh, Tiana and Naveen, and then Bernard and uh, it looks like that's uh, and and Miss Bianca. So again, really obscure there. Fantasyland, you've got Snow White and Prince Florian, my main man. Love the Prince Florian. Um, Belle and the Beast, Gaston, so it's all the couples. Gaston is uh, riding solo here, he's there. Uh, Rapunzel and uh, Flynn Rider, Princess Aurora and Prince uh, Philip. And then in Tomorrowland, you've got uh, Milo Thatch and Kida from Atlantis, are we kidding? I mean, that's awesome, but so random. Stitch and Angel, then in Critter County, you've got Judy Hobbs and uh, and Nick there, so uh, from from Zootopia. So Nick, uh, <clears throat> sorry, Nick Wild. So yeah, awesome a group of uh, couples, but some random ones too. I certainly would have liked Bo Peep and Woody, or maybe uh, even Jesse and Buzz. Uh, I don't see any of uh, you know any anybody from Frozen represented there. I don't. There, there's definitely a few. Cinderella isn't even uh, listed here. So there's definitely some folks that could have gone with. But I think what the appeal of these types of events, what I'm starting to think about is that there are these photo ops, there are these different experiences that typically your main Disney crew, your, uh, your your annual pass holders, if you will, 
are going to be excited about. There are going to be a lot of folks that are pumped up to go see horse, horse collar and Clarabelle cow, who are not normally in the parks. Or, uh, you know, Milo Thatch, who passes me on the street, I might not even necessarily know that he's a character, right? So at the end of the day, these character experiences are really a, uh, a big deal here. This is, this is fun, and I'm excited about it because one of the things I was worried about was we wouldn't get to see any of the characters. And even if it is a wave or, you know, my daughter's afraid of these, I wanted to get that character experience and be able to be really into them. So hopefully this works out. And one of the big things also is that there is fireworks. Now fireworks are just starting to get back into the uh, swing of things at the parks. They're starting to implement Mickey's Mix fireworks at the end of the night at Disneyland. But it's not something that's really even been heavily promoted and it's not every night. So I was also worried we wouldn't see that, but we will with the Sweethearts Night deal. So that's really gonna be it for Sweethearts Night on Disneyland. I'm pumped for it. Uh, it's gonna be a fun night. I don't know that we'll be there until midnight, but the idea that you can be is always fun. Our very first trip to Disneyland, uh, Disney World as adults, uh, my wife and I went down uh, in 2013 and we were in the parks till 3 a.m. And we were there till the final minute. Like they were giving me, ah, yeah, 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 come on, come on, come on, like trying to get you out of the park type deal. So we're pumped about the idea of being able to go there. Um, and be there also hopefully with a much, much smaller crowd and hopefully my brother-in-law can get in. They did say that if you get there and you talk to some of the uh, folks that are in the suits, uh, maybe they'll be able to help you out. But in case he can't get in, one of the things that we've also set up is that we will be attending the parks again the very next day and going to Disney's California Adventure. And because of this is one of the main reasons that I don't think we're gonna be able to get in for uh, the one of the main reasons rather that I don't think we're gonna stay till midnight the night before, especially because my, uh, you know, we have a one-year-old. So I mean, uh, the idea that we're gonna go at, till midnight and get there for park park drop, uh, rope drop rather at 8 a.m. just, I, I'd be very surprised. So we'll see, uh, but I'm excited to go there. We were not initially gonna do this. We we're gonna shoot back first thing the next morning, uh, but my, thankfully my wife's become a rewards member for JetBlue. We booked directly through the flight, which is not something we've done in the past. We've always just gone onto Expedia and gotten the best price guarantee and whatever inconvenience that comes along with that. We've done it. Not anymore, no, we belong to JetBlue. We only fly with JetBlue. We like being able to see some of the, you know, television and movies on the way. Makes the flight just go right by. And so we're excited about that. We were able to push our flight back until the evening the next day. And in doing so, uh, we're gonna be able to check out some of these Lunar New Year stuff over in Disney's California Adventure. I'm really excited about this. I've seen some of the pictures of it. And uh, the only thing is I, I want my, my my baby to be able to go and experience it during the day as well. It's nice to go at night, but I think for a kid going there with every, you know, the, the, the big bright lights, if you will, in the daytime, being able to take all of that in, I think will be fun. Hopefully so they do have some character meet and greets and they're gonna be in their uh, traditional Lunar New Year outfits. I think you can meet Tigger. I think you can meet uh, the Three Pigs. I know you can meet Minnie Mouse in her gear. And so being able to see some of these things, Mulan as well, being able to see some of these characters should be a lot of fun. And there's also a parade. Parades are something that they have not done for a while due to COVID. And this is the first one that I can even remember is they're doing a, um, a Mulan processional for Lunar New Year. So this is gonna be great. Uh, I'm really excited for this. We're not gonna be there the whole day. Hopefully we get there as quick to rope drop as we possibly can, considering how er late night the night before is going to be. But, uh, you know, we'll get there, hopefully get on a couple of different rides. I think that middle of the day is when most of that stuff goes on for the Lunar New Year. So we'll be there for about half the day. We'll be able to see some of that stuff probably cut out around three o'clock-ish. Um, but I'm excited for it. I'm really pumped up. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some of the Avengers stuff. My gear, my plan, because we're not staying the whole day, is certainly not to get this Genie Plus stuff. Uh, or any of those new lightning lane uh, type deals that they do have. But uh, if we get there early enough, maybe we can at least get in uh, for Spider-Man Web Slingers or for, uh, I know they have a uh, Guardians of the Galaxy attraction uh, that I think was there in 2018 when we went for the Halloween deal. I think they kind of made it Guardians of the Galaxy for Halloween, um, but even so, I don't really remember it. So being able to do that would be fun. Um, and my brother-in-law is definitely gonna be able to come with us there, which should certainly help out with some of the uh, rider swap deals there that we're gonna have to do with a one-year-old and be able to go on some of the attractions. So it's gonna be interesting uh, doing this stuff, kind of making that transition from adulting at Disney to Disney uh, with a family, but I'm really pumped for it. So keep it locked right here to Disney 101. Uh, we're gonna have vlogs up, we're gonna have everything, bring you along for the experience, and uh, I'm excited for it. So I've got a flight to catch. And in our next video, I'm probably gonna even show you guys how to pack for a one day trip to Disney. So let's do that and I will see you guys in the next video.